order, meeting of the Carver Board of Selectmen, January 19th, 2016. We have with us, I believe, a Boy Scout troop that is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, this is Cub, uh, is it Cub Scout Pack or? Yeah, Cub Scout Pack. Cub Scout Pack. Which number is it? Pack 63. Pack 63. Almighty God, humbly we pray your blessings as we concern our life with the opportunity to serve our community. Enhance us with your spirit of dignity and selflessness. May we become instruments of support and understanding as we seek to bring an environment of trust and purpose among all who provide the many services that make us all that we can become. Help us achieve the goals of our commitment to, in this office that is now our responsibility. And especially we lift our prayers for all the citizens in our community that we have been allowed to serve that they may discover the fullness and joy of life that we all seek and keep those serving in our armed forces and our first responders in our hearts and thoughts. Amen. Amen. With the, uh, if it's the pleasure of the board, I'd like to suggest we uh, uh, set the public comment period aside for a couple of seconds and ask uh, and recognize that uh, Cub Scout uh, Pack 63 uh, has a uh, donation they'd like to make and ask them to step forward to the microphones and let us know what it is they have for us. Good um, evening. Good evening. My name is Margaret Peters. Um, I am one of the volunteer uh, den assistant den leaders, and uh, I'm actually. Charlie in Charlie's Den. My other son just crossed over to Boy Scouts, so what I do is normally um, I like to champion what we call the food drive. It's held annually the end of October. I'm sorry it took me so long, but uh, we um, you send out bags for scouting for food and we hand them out to our neighbors and they fill them usually from items that are found in their pantries and things like that, but we came up with an idea also to hang out if, if um, we used Shaw's this year and they agreed to let us hang out there and I put out lists of what they could possibly buy to help sto uh, stock food banks and then I also <coughs> just on a whim decided to put out our donation jar and we ended up with $150 in cash. So I decided what a better way to do that is to give it in the cash form to the food pantry or the Council on Aging to see what they need so they could fill um, the, the shelves. So I, I don't know if I, it's, it's Donna or Dawn who's here who was supposed to come tonight, and I don't think she is. But um, so this was going to go to her <coughs> at the Council on Aging. I, I think you can probably provide it to our assistant town okay. administrator, and she can hang on to it. <laughs> <laughs> She's a trustworthy soul, and I have no doubt that the money will find its way to the food pantry. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. Hey guys. Really it, appreciate it, thank you. Boys, thank you very much for that hard work. It could be a field trip for you guys to go down to the pantry sometime. Help out? No, well, or just to see what they do. It's open uh, several days a week, mornings, and folks that are needy are there. Now we'll move on to the public comment period. This is a period of 10 minutes that we set aside for citizens that would like to speak. Uh, and we give each citizen three minutes to speak to a topic uh, of their concern and uh, ask them to limit to that period of time. Are there any citizens that would like to speak tonight? Yes, sir. Please step forward and provide us with your name and address. 
Robert Belbin, 26 Gate Street. Um, two issues. The first one is um, it's on your agenda. It's about the school and the computer issues that are going on. Not 100% in the loop of everything that's going on there, but uh, I have a couple of questions. The first one is, is uh, since the town already appropriated the money, that money, has that been given to the school already and they've already used that money? Number one. I, right. I guess just to give you a quick overview is that um, there are very specific rules that need to be followed in the procurement process and depending on how much is spent, uh, how, uh, the, the, the different rules apply. So in this particular case, there was just some confusion as to whether the computers that were purchased were or weren't on the state bid list because if they're on the state bid list, then you don't have to follow certain protocols. If they aren't on the state bid list, then you have other protocols you need to follow. There was some confusion. It wasn't done the right way. So what we're doing now is correcting that. And uh, I've spoken to the chairman of the school committee. Uh, the action we take tonight will make sure that the process is straightened out and then we'll work with the schools so that uh, the monies that uh, were appropriated for the computers uh, that will now be coming from the town side will work their way back to the town side so everyone ends up whole in the process. Okay, and the other thing was, is, is someone gonna be held accountable for this um, actions that have gone on? I mean, I, I mean, the schools, the first thing we wanted to do was to get it right and, and, and make sure that we're in compliance with, with, the, with the state requirements. And then uh, I know the schools have looked into it. And again, it was, I think, just a human error. And uh, I, I'm sure it won't be repeated. Okay. The second thing is um, I tried at a conservation commission meeting to sidestep a open meeting law complaint. Um, they went on a site visit that was not um, posted at all uh, for the public to know that they were going on a site visit. Um, when I asked about this and tried to get more information about it, and um, I told the board that, hey, listen, I just, I don't want to file an open meeting law complaint, and then the chairman turned around and said, we'll just go ahead and file a complaint, paraphrasing. Um, I'm trying to sidestep that with you guys right now, is to say, if there can be standardized processes for this, for a site visit for all the boards and committees, that they do post it in advance for the public to know when they're going on a site visit, um, if the neighbors don't know that the site visit is going on, uh, they may not be aware of the depth of the process that's going to be going through or the project um, that will be going on. And plus, the public wants to know what's going on to make sure that no discussions are made because some discussions could happen while they're out there, and that would be in violation of the open meeting law. So I just want a standardized process for all yeah, boards I mean, I, and committees for site visits. And like I said, I'm trying to sidestep, save the legal budget, all right, for an open meeting law complaint that um, could impact the town. But well, I figure well, if we well, sidestep it. And <clears throat> again, it's, it's a little bit outside of our purview, but we certainly can sort of look into it. Oh. But I think that in my experience, normally uh, a site visit, if it's gonna be conducted by a majority of, uh, of a board, would be posted. Uh, there's no requirement to let neighbors know unless it's a public hearing. Mr. Um, Chair, if I may, yeah. my understanding as your former conservation agent uh, is that site visits do not have to be posted. The important thing is that no decisions can be made. Um, furthermore, the public isn't always invited to a site. It's private property that people, the Conservation Commission is walking. When someone applies to the commission for a permit, um, it's up to the landowner as to whether neighbors or anybody else can be invited. And to the best of my knowledge, um, they don't have to be posted. So, I, I, and again, I could be wrong. I thought any time a majority of a board gathered together. No, it's when they are getting together to make a decision. So the commissioners who are there and the agent, if she's also there, have to be very careful that they're just there looking things over and they're not deciding anything. Um, it's, it's probably worth an inquiry to Paige just uh, to I mean, find out. Mike, I, if we could. I was going to comment too because my wife was on the Conservation Commission with Ms. Ewans for a number of years and many times it was a, an um, trying to get two or three or one member of the committee to go with a conservation agent Correct. to that site. So most of the time, it wasn't a majority of the conservation Correct. committee that, to begin with, that's also but true. they had to have a, a person there so that when they came back and had the hearing, which was the official meeting, right. uh, then they had input that they could give to the whole committee. Right, so, so it wasn't I, just the you agent. You know, I don't ever remember Mm -hmm. Judy saying that they had to, because Judy was a secretary for a number of years, and and up till recently, and she never had to uh, post a meeting 
on a site visit. I, I think we may have actually gotten a, a Coleman and, and Page opinion, but you know, it's worth another inquiry I, if you I, want. I think uh, under the circumstances, because it's if, worth we, if we had to do it, we certainly would have. Yeah, asking the town administrator to just ask the question. Was just a, to go further through you, Mr. Monitor, uh, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, it's more than just a decision. It's discussions. All right, it's not just making a decision. If you have discussions during a site visit about well, again, the I'll, project, I'll, I'll ask the that's part of the open meeting out. law complaint, yep. pro, um, open meeting law process. And the problem is the public isn't there and knows what's going on. And discussions are made or decisions are actually made out there during the site visit. The public doesn't know. Well, I, I think so, Ms. Hewins raises a good point that if you're going on private property, you can't always invite the entire public to, to be there. But we will get clarity. We will find out exactly what the law requires. <coughs> that's what we will comply with. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Bell, what date was that? Did this occur on? Um, it was the day before the last Conservation Commission meeting, which is last Wednesday, so it had been Tuesday. So, like I said, I'm just trying to sidestep. I mean, the open meeting law for site visits it's it's kind of it's different the way it's written out um so i'm sure coleman and page will turn around and and agree with well you don't have to post it if there's no discussions but how are you supposed to know if there's discussions being made well if it's I mean, not there so it's again just, whatever they say but if the if the rule is no discussions we have to rely on the honor of the board in terms yep. of no discussions so oh. but let's let's find out what it is and we will yep. announce it at the next meeting okay okay thank you thank you <coughs> just sent it off done and uh, let's put that in the agenda for the next meeting just to report back what we found. All right, next we have a poll hearing, NSTAR and Verizon. Is anyone here from NSTAR or Verizon or Eversource, Eversource or whatever the name, <laughs> appropriate name is now? Hey, okay, what's the name then, this month? <laughs> Karen Ray from Eversource. Eversource, thank you. Um, you are uh, petitioning, uh, uh, you provide us with a petition covering the installation of a poll on uh, North Main Street, necessary uh, to service the new Dunkin' Donuts convenience store at 133 North Main Street. That confused us a little bit because there's a Dunkin' Donuts up that way, and I know there's a new, what is it, New England? New England Farms. Farms, Farms, Farms going in. So yes. was that Dunkin' Donuts I more descriptive of the location? I believe so. Okay. I was going to say, it's hard to believe there'd be a Dunkin' Donuts in the store right across the street from the Dunkin' Donuts, <coughs> but I've seen it, I suppose. So, um, Any questions from the board? Oh, make the motion we accept this application. Second. Further discussion? There being none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank Just you a much. quick question. Do we have all the polls completed for the Route 58 project? You should have. Did you get the paper? You should have the paper here. I'm sorry. So there's one more still outstanding? Is it a public um, I believe the, all the re relocations? Uh, yes. Yes. <coughs> um, it should have been sent to you from Verizon. It, it's, it's left my office. I went to Verizon for signature. Okay. And I thought they had mailed it out to you within the last couple of weeks. Can you can yeah. you double check that? Because I, I know. I'll call, I'll call them tomorrow. Thank you. Make sure you get that. Excuse me. Before you leave, um, Selectman Hewins pointed out that this was a public hearing all about the poll. So I should ask if there are any members of the public that wanted to speak to the installation of the poll up by uh, 133 North Main Street. Should have <laughs> Robert Goldman, 26 Gate Street. I think with that uh, New England Farms, they are planning a drive-through with that complex being uh, built. So it could be another donut shop or something like that. Okay, just clarify. As long as they can make money selling Dunkin' Donut coffee, I guess. Anyone else that <coughs> wanted to uh, speak to the issue? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, we move on to- I need to vote on it. We didn't really vote on it yet. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We voted and then I... Oh, yes, then you had the comment. Yeah, so you voted the comment. Okay. Yeah, I, I Do we need up. another vote That's then? Ms. Hewins yeah. brought to your attention okay. that I messed up. Um, cool. But a thank you for getting clarity on the fact that I messed up now. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> We're here to help each other. Thank you. I really <coughs> okay. <laughs> it being 7.15, <coughs> we have Powers and Sullivan who uh, conduct the annual town audit. And they are here to present the FY15 audit. We have Dick Sullivan. So, uh, Dick. Yeah, good evening. Uh, Dick Sullivan here. Um, I happen to be the engagement partner for, for this year's audit. And um, what I just wanted to kind of do for you in the next few minutes is talk about how the audit went 
uh, give you some of my impressions as to where the town is from a financial perspective, and then um, uh, go over the three reports you have, and of course answer any questions you might have relative to that. Uh, Thank you. From an audit standpoint, what happens for the, we we break the audit into two phases. We come in in the spring and we do what I call things that aren't necessarily uh, needed for our June 30th year end. And what that means is we do a lot of the single audit. This town receives more than $500,000 worth of federal grants, so you have to go undergo what's called an A133 audit. And so we, we audit the special education grant at the school. Um, we look at the budget because there's certain things that we have to do relative to compliance with laws and regulations as it relates to that. Uh, other things that tend not to be, tend to be static and not to have necessarily any activity between the springtime and year end is long-term debt. And we also look at um, or do what we call test of transactions. And what that means is, is that we look at the major cycles of transactions that you have, which are payroll, revenue, uh, cash disbursements, and also general journal entries. And we look at 30 to 50 of each of those test them and make sure that they're, uh, you know, the expenditures are appropriate, the revenue is properly classified, et cetera. And that's all the work we do in the spring. We come in sometime in early November and do what I call walk down the balance sheet. We look at your cash, your receivables, your capital assets, all the different liabilities you have, which are the big ones are, are the pension liability and OPEB. We also look at, uh, make sure the cutoff is correct, meaning that are any expenditures that were made in July, August, September, all the way through the date of our field work should have been reflective as of June 30th, and we do all that type of work. Now, to give you an idea, what, I guess if I was in your shoes, I'd say, what's in this report this year that may be different than last year and somebody would ask a question about? Um, the big bang for this year's report was called GASB 68. And what that was is it um, took the pension liability, your proportionate share, of the pension liability of Plymouth County and put it on smack on your balance sheet. It was about $16 million. And what that is is your share of the unfunded portion of that, of the Plymouth County balance sheet. <laughs> Plymouth County is about 60% funded uh, as of the date of the actuarial report we work with. So that 15 or $16 million liability really kind of blew a hole in what we call your net position. We're actually in net position is a negative amount now because of that. With that said, understand that every single other community in Massachusetts is feeling the same hurt. So you're not really, uh, there's no real issues related to it from my standpoint. As a matter of fact, um, when you, I know that you're probably going to be sitting down with some of the bonding agencies uh, soon. This, this new GASB just took what they already knew, that had already been in the financial statements, that had already been in the footnotes, and put it on the front of your statements. Um, it, it, it does not look good, but has been perfectly vetted and already understood by the rating agencies. Excuse me. Um, I just want to say to the board as we move through this, uh, feel free if something strikes you to speak up. Oh, please do. Uh, uh, that that know, makes it easier actually it. for so, me. And that was, I was actually going to ask that question is that um, I, the bonding agencies or any, any financial institution familiar with municipalities in Massachusetts were already aware that this liability was out there. That's correct. It just wasn't appearing on the um, <coughs> on our it wasn't spreadsheets. It wasn't appearing on the face of the financial statements. Right. It was always a footnote in the back. Right. So, so again, to your point, um, it shouldn't result in any sort of a penalty to any community going out to try to do its, uh, its bonding as it's done in the past. Not at all, particularly for the pension liability because on, under Mass General Law, you're obligated to fund it. Everybody has until 2040 to get it funded. Mm -hmm. And because it's generated by, uh, um, regulated by Mass General Law, the rating agencies don't really have an issue with it at all. Uh, and uh, I guess just to jump ahead on OPEB, is there yep. anything anticipated uh, that that will also be showing up on the sheet? You are ahead of me, and I'll walk right to it. <laughs> um, first of all, your OPEB went up a little bit. Um, your, I think it's um, 22 million of what you had not yet funded. In fiscal 18, there's a new GASB coming out called GASB 75. And the very same thing that GASB 68 did for the pensions, it's going to do for OPEP. Your most recent actuarial, not the one that we use for this financial statement, but the one that was just done, says your unfunded liability for OPEP is 41 point something million dollars. That 41 million dollars will then appear on your balance sheet also. So what you're going to have is the pension liability, the OPEP liability, and your debt, which in most situations, I think will cause a significant negative amount in your net position. Again, like, like 
the pension liability, OPEB is understood with one caveat. There's no mass general law that says you have to fund it. And so what the, S the agency, I think the rating agencies are going to be looking at is they're going to say, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. That's the real big question. Because, I mean, just jumping a little bit ahead, your fund balance is a very healthy 10, actually almost 11% of your budget. Um, your fund balance includes the way we look at it is called unassigned fund balance and includes the stabilization funds you have, which are about $1.8, $1.9 million, not including the capital and debt stabilization, and then what is called unreserved fund balance. So when you start hitting into the double digits into the 10, 11 percent, that by most standards and GFOA standards is a, is a healthy balance to have in reserves. Even without your um, stabilization funds, you're at 6 percent, which puts you in a peer group, I would say, above your normal peer group. Um, so those things are all good, and that's what the rating agencies look for. And then the next question probably will be, after they go through the reserves and talk about your policies and procedures, is what's going to happen with OPEB. And all this is going to do now is take a portion of the liability which you previously recognized and put the rest of it on the balance sheet. And I believe <coughs> uh, over the last few years we have been taking steps already towards um, I think you've thrown about 125,000. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. okay. And I know there's a, there's plans if uh, if it can be done to do so uh, incrementally all the time. Um, yeah, we just joined the part of the Plymouth County uh, yep. OPEB Commission. And, uh, and and I, I if I'm hearing your point is we need to demonstrate to those lenders that we're aware of it and we're addressing it. That's correct. Um, and I believe that the change in the health insurance plan actually helped uh, uh, trigger a fairly decent drop in the uh, OPEB. Right, Dick, you mentioned the <coughs> four one is what our new actuary That's is. about but three to four million dollars less than the previous unfunded liability. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and again, th that's, that's three or four million dollars you don't have to worry about. We still have a 41 million dollar nut mm -hmm. over our heads, but it's still something that, it's, it's improvement. The other thing, too, um, is and it all depends on how the, the um, a lot of, I'll tell you what my clients are doing. What they're saying to the rating agencies, and it's making sense, is that we're going to obviously have to fulfill our pension liabilities, our obligation every year to the pension plan. During that time, we're going to do what we can to address the OPEB issue, unfunded liability. And then upon the, 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 when, the when the appropriation for the pension is no longer needed because it's fully funded, divert that into OPEB. I mean, it's a long-term plan, mm -hmm. but this is a long-term problem. So, it, th you know, that is the kind of things that I'm seeing our clients tell them that is um, at least giving them uh, an idea that you do have something in place that makes sense. And, and uh, would you also put us, uh, you, you say you would put us a little bit ahead of the curve of our peer towns? On your, on your, fund, on your fund balance analysis, pure general fund, mm -hmm. yes, I do. Yes, I do, because I think what you have and what I've seen is you have some policies and procedures that relates to the use of free cash, which I think is very important, because the idea of free cash is to use free <coughs> cash for items that I call not structural. It's not paid for salaries or something that's going to be the year, year after year after year. If you use free cash, it's for one-time money, and I've seen that done prudently, mostly through your STMs, which I think is really good, um, and you also have a as DOI recommends, if you're going to use some free cash, you want to replenish it, and you have been able to do so in in successive years. That's a trend. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was just the first year we we're doing, I wouldn't be uh, probably as 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 uh, positive. But this is probably the third or fourth year that I've seen it. So that's why I, I think that at 10 percent, because you were at the same 10 or 11 percent last year, 10 or 11 percent the previous year. That means if you're using it, and you did use it or you planned on using, you didn't have to. You did plan on using about almost a million dollars, mostly f to fund stabilization and things like that. Um, and then you were successful in having estimated receipts come in a little higher and some turnbacks of about one, two percent of your budget going back, meaning these are things we didn't have to spend, which means not use of free cash. And the fact that you had excess receipts of about a million dollars more than you anticipated means you didn't have to use free cash. So the plan to use it is okay, but the fact that you replenished it is even better. I'm, I'm pleased to hear you say that because we've done some real belt tightening around here, and uh, our town administrator <coughs> has uh, worked with us in installing some very s um, uh, specific uh, rules, uh, financial rules governing the use of our of, of funding, 
we've had to really, uh, you know, cinch the belts. Uh, money has gotten much tighter, but it's good to see that we're getting results as a result of making those efforts. And, and just so you know, I mean, I'm not speaking for Mike, but the rating agencies really um, put a lot of a lot of emphasis on policies and procedures, because when it saying you're going to do it is one thing, have it written and then doing it is another. And the written part is very important for them because that means it's been formalized and that, you know, a group like yourself has blessed it and, m and is moving forward to make it happen. Yeah, we've and actually had town meeting bless our policies and procedures. So. Mr. Woods? Uh, I like what you're saying, too, because this school issue has been so important to us, and we're going forward to borrow money for that. And when we're bringing down our obligations and then we're looking for bonding. Uh, if you're saying that the bonding agencies are aware of what's happening here in Massachusetts and that that won't hurt our bonding rating. That's correct. Uh, that, that will be very important. I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, but yeah. you, you're a double A right now by S&P. And you know, there, there's a possibility you can maybe get a double A plus. I'm not saying that, but I've mm -hmm. seen, I, I've been through a couple of these things recently and I've seen them go up that extra uptick. And um, you know, you guys are profiling that way. Um, you know, <coughs> Carver is a community that does not have a lot of industry. I mean, your, your, your demographics are what they are, mm -hmm. but you've been, what, what I've seen from demonstrated from your finance side is you're working well with what you got. And I think that's important. Didn't mean to get you off course. Or no, no, insurance. that's fine. Actually, it works out better for me that way. Um, the other thing in there just to talk about is um, if there's been any significant capital asset activity. <coughs> um, the, you had two big expenditures. Uh, well, uh, there was some design work done for both the fire station and the elementary schools, which was give or take a million bucks. And um, at year end, you bought, I don't know what a Pierce pumper is, but you bought three of them for about a million seven. So um, it's a fire engine that we, they were needed. Okay, um, so that that was uh, those were the two big expenditures from a capital asset standpoint. Um, I'll just briefly talk about you know your balance sheet, you know your 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 assets, your, your fourteen million dollars in cash, which is the biggest thing we look at. I mean, because it's liquid, it moves. Um, and then we talked about the pension liability, the OPEB liability, and you talked about going out for debt. The general fund debt service, believe it or not, is 1% of your budget right now, less than 1%. So you would definitely certainly have the capacity of what's coming down the road for the elementary school and the fire station and the other things like that to, um, to service the needs of it. Because one of the things that uh, I, I would suggest is, and, and maybe long term, is most, you don't usually see debt service below 5% on any community. And the only reason I mention that is that if, you're, if your debt service is below 5%, you may want to just pay attention. Is there something going wrong? Is it, are your vertical assets or your, or your infrastructure assets deteriorating to a point where they're not <coughs> being kept up? And one of the things of a good debt policy is you say, I would like to maintain a certain level of percentage because as debt service goes down, <coughs> you bring more on based on a uh, CIP plan. And I know that you have one that's wor being worked in place. And I think the fact that you're going out for debt now is good. And I was just, I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of insight that maintaining that level is probably appropriate. You're too. urging us to spend more money. No, I'm urging you, I'm urging you to take care of your assets. Right. Um, and that's what I'm really saying. What, look, pay attention to what you need from your capital needs and uh, maintain a level of debt service to us. Because I look at capital and debt. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, I, I think that's a good combination where you long-term assets, long-term um, debt. Um, and all I'm saying is that by maintaining a level of debt service at a, at a certain percentage, it means that you're also paying attention to the needs, mm -hmm. the capital needs that you have. Is that at all affected? Uh, you're probably uh, aware that uh, we're setting uh, a new gro personal property new growth aside into a, a building stabilization fund. Yeah. And so we're building the fire station under the tax levy mm -hmm. as opposed to having to go out uh, and uh, uh, do, an over, uh, do an override or Debt, debt, debt exclusion. Debt exclusion. Debt exclusion. <coughs> and the plant we have in the process along the line as we move forward with the fire station, eventually to do the police station the same way. Uh, and I believe as we, as we grow this fund, it's our belief that other than having to build a new school, most facilities in town are going to be able to be dealt with uh, through this. I mean, the town hall and the library are actually recent renovations. And again, as a small town, we don't have all that many uh, capital 
uh, items to invest in. Mm -hmm. So that uh, uh, is is that sort of uh, innovation or ingenuity looked at as well uh, in the bonding process? I mean, uh, how many towns that you know of are, are inside the debt limit versus outside the debt right, limit? Exactly. Yeah, it's a combination all across the board, mm -hmm. all across the board, and usually it is by the size of the project. You know, when you're dealing in a several million dollars, not several, tens of millions of dollars for an elementary school, a debt exclusion is absolutely appropriate. Um, you know, maybe it's like some communities might say under five million or under eight million, we're gonna keep it inside the debt limit. Mm -hmm. I can't give you, I know communities that love to go outside the debt limit for everything they do. I know communities that never go outside the debt limit, particularly cities. So it's, I, I can't explain the uh, whether it's favorable or non-favorable as it relates to anybody looking at it, to be quite honest with you. It's just a matter of what your tolerance is and what makes sense for you in terms of the overall expenditure for the project. Yeah, as you might mentioned, we don't have a lot of industry here, so trying to be sensitive to the taxpayers uh, as much as we can incorporate under the levy right. uh, is fair to the taxpayers instead of asking them to take on the additional burden. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Just for a little clarity on that, with the capital stabilization fund that you're speaking to, Ron, and this gets into the 5%, where we're now 1% of our debt capacity. The way that that capital stabilization fund is set up is when debt is paid off, that debt service rolls into the capital stabilization fund, so it can be repopulated to a new project that falls within that 10% cap. Mm -hmm. So even though we don't have a separate fund for debt and we don't have a separate fund for capital, we have it combined. Um, here as a, as a capital stabilization fund. <coughs> I think the other point is, as, as Dick is mentioning, different communities, different cities do it different ways. The key point is what is your plan and what is your objectives? Carver has made a conscious effort that 10% of its revenue needs to go into main uh, taking care of your assets. And whether you do that through debt or whether you do that through capital, it's 10% of your, your, your <coughs> revenue is funneled into that. So you've made that declaratory statement. Then the decision is it's pure economics as to what way makes sense based upon the size of the project, the financing market, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we've actually talked a lot about what I want to talk about with the finance, the, from the financial statements. Just to give you an idea though, the final results is very simple for us. Um, you have an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion by uh, layman standards. Um, I was very happy with and uh, working with the finance staff in terms of the sense of urgency that they had, the type of product we received, our ability to get our answers to our questions timely and accurately. Um, I, I'm gonna share with you some of the management letter, but I didn't come across any internal control issues, things that I would worry if I was on your side of the desk. Um, and um, the good thing is, is I did not make one recommendation to Meg for an adjustment that she should make to her, her ledgers um, as a result of our audit, which means to me that the information you are receiving on a regular basis is in fact accurate. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of wraps up the, the, the actual financial statements. The, quickly on the federal awards report, um, the town spent a million dollars. We tested special education, which was $515,000. <coughs> There's three reports in that um, in there which talks about compliance with laws and regulations, compliance with the administration of grants, and also the actual uh, report at Shell's which lays out all the expenditures. All those were unmodified opinions slash clean opinions, no findings, no question cost. Um, the management letter. Uh, we, we do two things. We look at last year's comments and revisit them and uh, adjudicate whether they've been resolved. We introduced four new comments this year, but focusing on prior year comments. There were nine last year, four of them were resolved, which I consider to be good. Some of the things that are hanging around are things that are not that easy to take care of. One of them is the fraud risk assessment. Um, I just, it's just a matter of going through and documenting where areas of risk evolve, um, what the mitigating factors are, and then actually getting approval from you folks that you're comfortable with that. Um, I would like to see the year end closing procedures more formalized, and the reason for that is uh, just to, it's, a, it's something that's done once a year. And it, if everybody knows their role, it tends to be more expeditious. And that's what that's that, that comment's all about because some things drag. And a lot of times we don't know the impact that we have on other people's work 
by the fact that maybe we're not getting our work done on a timely basis. Um, accounting for betterments is an old one. Accounting for septic loans is an old one. Most of that has to do with the reconciliations and making sure the detailed records per whoever is responsible for it um, has also agrees to the ledger, and they did not again this year. Uh, again, it's an internal control issue, but not the kind that warrants any raising more than it is. Um, and then we, um, I, this is a comment that I had in the past and it related to, I think I was under the title of budgeting consolidated town services. Specifically, I was looking at health insurance. And I noted in the prior year that the health insurance, only one department, the school department, budgeted health insurance in this department. I have not seen that in any of our other clients. I think it should be a line item of the town, not a specific department. And Mr. Um, Chairman, I would like us to really push forward and get this this year under one. We have, we've tried it for two years now, now to have all the health benefits under one line item. And I think we as a board should really st stress that this year. <coughs> I think I might have also became aware this year, although I didn't mention it, that I think there's some pension issues related to that too. Am I correct on that or not? And it's the same thing for pensions. Pensions tend to be a one line item for the town as a whole. And I would recommend both health and pension be handled the same way. Um, four new comments. Uh, police deal and fire permits. Um, there's a deficit at year end in the police detail account. Uh, my understanding is that the, there's been a a uh, significant improvement in the way details are handled um, now and there's a better system in place, but at the time there was a deficit. Deficits have to be funded and they have to be funded by the general fund. Um, the treasurer's cash reconciliation, the vendor and payroll account tend to be, they're reconciled by the, the bank, but there has to be a proper monitoring of those. And our comment was that there should be at least some sort of formalized process to validate and vet the fact that the um, banks did a good job of the reconciliation of both those accounts. Um, and water user charges, we found out that some of the water user charges were not billed on a timely basis. Turned out that I think people forgot about it. I think it was a change in personnel and they totally missed it. And finally, there was one uh, item related to the budget, um, budget development monitoring. Um, I was, I've been wrestling with this, and what I came to the conclusion was is that the Munis ledger, which is under the town accountant's overall authority, has a very detailed ledger relative to the school. The school has a process where they actually can, basically it's bottom line spending right, based on um, ed reform. But there's also, there should be, um, there's, there's a series of line items in the entire school budget for which they were, transfers were not being made. And the issue I had with it was twofold. One is, Meg really can't monitor the entire school budget without monitoring at the detail level. So my thought process was that the school's actually m using money from different buckets, that the school should notify the town accountant of the transfers. And at the same time that when I was making this comment, I realized that I said that uh, it's probably good for the school to do these transfers because if somebody is looking at Munis, responsible for a particular department, they see money available in their line item, they don't know how the overall budget's going, they may not be paying attention to another line item in that budget that's in a deficit. So the idea of bottom line budgeting does make sense, but my comment here is it should be managed at the detail level, because Meg's responsibility under MGL is to make sure line items don't get, don't get overspend and the entire budget doesn't get overspend, and I don't think you can do one without the other. And that's what that comment's about. And uh, how typical compared to other towns? Uh, is that a practice that you see regularly? In I, see, I see line item transfers approved by school committee on a regular basis. <coughs> and also I see in here your comment here that also the DOR has weighed in on this too, that stating I, that I, that's I, the way it should be I done. Did, I did my homework and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just, you know, Richard Sullivan writing this down, although I felt pretty comfortable about it. And yeah, they have weighed in on that. Um, and finally, we already talked about was the new GASB coming out, GASB 75 relative to the new OPIP. Um, so just to, to summarize, if I could, I'm a businessman too, and I'm sorry if I'm taking too long. No, 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 um, actually, you've got uh, 20 minutes. Okay, um, I, the, the audit went well. I mean, I mean you know, we, tr we need to do what we need to do. We have to come in with our professional skepticism. We have to kick the ties as hard as we can, as necessary, as, and as often as we can. But um, overall, the audit went well. I mean, I like it, the fact that when I can come in here, um, have everything done, and be gone in two weeks, 
that's the way it's supposed to work and that's the way it did work. So, um, you know, there's some comments in here that I think are improvements that I think are worthwhile considering. Um, but in, in terms of working with the folks here and the information I received, uh, you, you should be pretty comfortable with the information you're getting and who it's coming from. Great. That's good to hear. I'm not sure that we've heard that every time we've had an, a report on our audits. In the past. Well, it, <clears throat> I think the past few years we've been trying to move towards financial sensibility, and so it, it's good to hear this. Um, you know, we've, we've, made, we've made some difficult uh, decisions, I mean, in, in some cases, to make sure we stayed within our uh, budget constraints and where we should be putting money to bring some of these uh, funds down. So we, we really, I appreciate hearing this. Mr. Chairman, I just think, well, first off, thank you for the great work you, your uh, staff has done on this. It's a great report. But I think now we as a board need to take a look at these comments and take a real good look at them and set up a schedule of which ones we want to see attacked first to clear up and then check quarterly. I mean, we don't, we didn't, you know, we got the report last year and, you know, there were some things we kind of wanted to do, but there was no follow-up on it. This year I'd like to see us, you know, set a pri which ones are our priority to get done, and then track them and have a quarterly update so we know how we're doing on that, so we can know which ones we'll be able to close out. Yeah, I, and I just to uh, echo Mr. Ward's uh, thoughts, we've had to make some difficult decisions. Um, we've had to uh, take, uh, you know, a hard look at personnel and staffing, and uh, it's, Nice to hear that the uh, some of the fiscal pain the town has had to you know in some of the decisions that uh, it's that we're getting the benefit of that that as a result of bringing this sort of discipline to the town budget uh, we're getting the results that we'd hoped we get so yes sir uh, Mr Carter Carter uh, what's your reaction to Mr Sullivan's report? John, if I could ask you to come forward so you can use the microphone, please. Uh, John is uh, chairman of our finance committee. Okay, thank you. Um, Pull the mic over to you, John, sure. please. We've got to think of the audience back home. Yes, yes. Um, overall, um, there have been you know, major improvements the way the town runs its finances. I've said that in the past. Um, but on the management letter, what I do see are some of the same issues that um, I've seen going back eight, nine years now with regards to reconciliations, uh, things of that nature. Um, we've got a new system now in place, right? A new complete financial system that was supposed to alleviate a lot of these problems as well. Um, I just, as a follow-up to um, what Selectman Dunham was saying, is that I think what we really need to do is start looking at these internal control issues. Um, how do we fix them? Uh, and one thing I was thinking about um, was, did we ever do any type of staffing audit on both the treasurer's office and the town accountant's office to find out what the needs are there. Um, it's, just, it's just been around forever, and I'd like to see some kind of plan, and the Finance Committee will obviously help out as well um, to start resolving some of these internal control issues. But overall, I think it's a great opinion. I think the t town's made great strides in the uh, funding the pensions and our unfunded liabilities. The stabiliz stabilizations account is really helping out, and we're disciplined at town meeting. Town meeting follows the town policies, which is great. So there's been a complete change around the way the town is managing its finances, but I would like to see more focus on some of these internal control issues. And, and John, to speak to your point about staffing, we're, we're waiting on a Department of Revenue report. The Department of Revenue was mm -hmm. in and they did their own study and we're waiting to get that. I believe they're gonna be addressing some staffing, you know, whether, what, what's, whether staffing's adequate or what recommendations they may have. So when we get that, we'll have some additional insight, I think, on the staffing side. Great. And that's due probably within the next month? Uh, we're shooting for the first week in February, barring some other community collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Meg, yes, the town accountant. Please step forward, identify yourself, and where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Copper, sorry. Um, I just wanted to speak to the reconciliations. Um, just for the record, for fiscal 16, cash is reconciled through November. Receivables are reconciled through October, so that's, I would say, pretty standard. Pretty good. Yeah. Yep. So. And the town treasurer. 
That was Meg LeMay, who's a town accountant, and now Paula Newt, who's a town treasurer. I would also like to s just state that um, the all of December's reconciliation, bank reconciliations were done last Thursday, which was January 14th. So I think that's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank it you. Will stay that way. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. All right, progress. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you, Mr. Sullivan, thank you. Excellent job. Thank you. That's one of the nicer reports we've had. Mm -hmm. I'll take a report like that every once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think on a regular basis would be appreciated. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will go now to the uh, town administrator update as soon as he returns to his seat. <laughs> yes, bonding, finance. You have to wait till you get to your microphone, oh, please. Uh, update on bonding. <coughs> Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, the update on bonding. Um, the town accountant and I, uh, Meg LeMay, met with uh, First Southwest uh, last week um, going over our uh, cash flow needs and, and financing needs going forward. Um, what we're looking to do is potentially on or before March 15th, uh, I'm sorry, uh, on or before March, um, the first week in March, is uh, to have bids come back for uh, a, a large bond that the town of Carver will be offering. What we're looking to do is we have about uh, $10 million of expenditures uh, regard, re related to the new fire station and for the three fire, three fire engines. In addition to that, the town shares about $23 million for the new school project. Uh, so this bond is actually in, in weighing the risk of the market. And what we're seeing and being advised of right now is because of some of the turmoil in the market with it jumping up and down, uh, many investors are looking for more secure uh, places to park their money. As a result for that is that the municipal market is doing very well right now, meaning that the rates are coming in um, low. Um, and uh, so we're looking to roll out a little over $30 million bond. Um, and that'll be for, uh, we're looking at um, b basing that, uh, the large portion of it up to 25 years, some of it we may do a little shorter, 15 or 20 years. Having said that, in late February, uh, we're gonna be uh, meeting with S&P, Standard & Poor's, uh, to do our bond rating and to have them review everything you just heard tonight, our audit, our financial policies, what town meeting has approved, and, and more importantly, it's not only that you say you're doing these things, it's showing that you've done them. So this will be our third budget cycle that we're gonna be going through, showing that these policies have been, been followed through. Um, so that all being said is that uh, we'll be looking for uh, votes um, uh, from the board in late February and early March. Uh, we did an earlier on, and my earlier recommendation was to um, actually go out and borrow $20 million at this time and then wait till next year to borrow the other $10 million. Um, but although no one has a crystal ball, the odds of the rates going down significantly lower than they are right now is um, not great. Uh, however, the odds of the rates going up are significantly higher. So it's, it's a calculated risk on, in essence, paying a little financing cost for an extra year of money, but having a bird in hand. And that's why we're gonna be looking at the $30 million number uh, to move forward with. Any questions on that? Now again, we're going from an outstanding debt of uh, less than $300,000 right now, which is all that remains on the library and the school to now $30 million. But these are critical things the town needs and we've been talking this, through that for a while. This will be our sh full share of the school in this bonding program. Just shy of that. It'll be about 90% okay. of our full share. All right, yep, I got it. And the reason why we're not going to the full amount is we don't know if the project's gonna come in under budget, we hope it will. Um, so we may not have a need to, to bond the full amount. And the second piece is uh, the market is also very competitive um, 
and um, actually offering, if you will, incentives is probably the best way of describing it, um, where we may be able to get um, um, some payment through the bond market that we can come back and ask the selectmen uh, premiums is what they're called, premiums, where we can come back and reinvest that uh, back into paying down um, the debt rather than going out and borrowing. So um, we're leaving a little bit of buffer okay. based upon those, um, those minor things that may happen. But again, okay. the bulk of the story is we are looking to, to bond over 90% <coughs> of our share of the school project up front. Okay. And we will be spending that money within the next two years anyway. Well, it's good to know that. You know, John, John's on the building committee. You know, if something came up regarding that, we would we sure. want to be in the know. <laughs> and I think what's also important is once we do this, we'll be able to then update the numbers that we had um, stated uh, what the cost was going to be per household. And again, your goal is that we come in 10% below that number. And I think that um, <coughs> we're going we're gonna to try to do that. So we'll be able to, with definitively, Very be able good. to tell the public that we're actually borrowing. Their payment is actually going to be less than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. And just a point of clarification, because I know there's been some people that have complained about their tax bills going up. This is just part of the normal increase you see every year. This is, that has nothing to do with the de uh, debt exclusion that was already approved by town meeting and by the vote. That bill is still yet to be coming down the pike. Yes, um, on that, just to give you an idea, uh, by releasing the bonds now, our first interest payment will be on September 15th, and our first principal payment will be on March 15th. So in essence, this first year, um, the taxpayer will be paying three quarters of the annual bill for interest and one quarter of the bill for principal. So the first year will be a, a smaller number than what year two through 25 will be. But that's how it'll be phased in. But two through 25 should be the same each year. That is correct. <coughs> that is correct. And again, we will have definitive uh, answers on that information, on that numbers. Any other questions on the bonding? Uh, if I can have Meg pop up here again. Um, the next item we have on here is just update. Um, Year to date on budgets, uh, we're 50% of the way through the uh, through the year, uh, through our fiscal year. You all received um, the um, the actuarian expenses um, for all the different departments. And Meg, if you want to just take a minute to talk about that. About the expenses. Yes. Any any issues you see? Um, I would say that it, from my review, everything looks to be on target. Uh, there are a couple of items that are small that I mean normally occurs throughout the year that probably will be dealt with it by year-end line, line item transfers. Um, but other than that, I would say everything seems to be in order. I think our only other concern continues to be just the North Carver Water District. And, um, um, you know, that will just continue to have its trials and tribulations. I mean, we'll have to be continue to be subsidized by the town for the foreseeable future until more development occurs. And We've known that for the last two years since I've been here, so, and, um, but we're just going to continue to update you on that, that it will continue to need to be subsidized by the But time. it is happening. I mean, that, that uh, new complex going in up there that we just voted the polling for, yep. that will be using water. Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. We're going in a positive. Um, just another couple quick updates. Um, our meals tax that we've collected in the first six months is seventy-two thousand uh, dollars. You do have a, a peak period in the fall with King Richard's Fair and also the Edaville Winter events and so forth. Uh, so I don't consi consider, I don't think that trend of seventy-two thousand dollars is going to double for the year. But again, that was pretty good this year. Jimmy, what did we anticipate in the receipts there? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. So yeah. certainly cool. reasonable to expect that we'll Hit meet that target. expectation. Right. Correct. Um, other than that, um, pretty much everything is running uh, as it should be. Um, uh, we're going to have a small <coughs> increase needed for veterans benefits, uh, but nothing like in past years because we did increase their budget this year. Um, other than that, everything is um, pretty much moving along as, as it should be. 
any other questions to for Meg while we have her in front of us? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Meg. Um, the next item that I have is a, a vote um, to um, use donation funds to purchase um, the 278 computers and 46 monitors that were installed this summer at the school. Um, and uh, the source of the funding for this as you may recall, uh, when we did um, the first Borrego project that I was involved in, uh, where we had a bunch of neighbors dispute, um, we ended up uh, negotiating, um, there were a bunch of additional amenities that were done to the project, screening trees and so forth with the project. Uh, we also negotiated a, a favorable uh, tax increment finance, I'm, I'm sorry, a pilot for the town, payment lieu of taxes. Um, in addition to that, uh, what Borrego provided also was a $25,000 um, donation to the town to use for as, as we see fit uh, through the Board of Selectmen. In addition, uh, this past fall you approved two more Borrego projects, uh, one at uh, Zero Solar Circle and the other one at uh, Zero Federal Road. Um, the Federal Road Project is up and running, and that also has a, an additional $25,000. That check has been cut. I will be receiving that check this week uh, because that project just went online last month. Um, so that is uh, moving forward. So with that uh, $50,000, um, and after uh, both the town accountant and I have spent probably well over 100 hours on this uh, this issue um, in talking with our, our legal counsel and with uh, many others plus reviewing all the records. Uh, our concern is that um, that given the procurement process, technically what has to happen is the computers have to be returned to the vendor. And then from there we have to go out and do a new procurement. And that new procurement could take 30 to 45 days. Then once you procure, procure another um, um, uh, 300 or so computers, uh, then that's going to require the computer uh, company to take another 30 to potentially 60 days to uh, install all the software. And then you have the point of time where you then have to install them back into the school. Before you know it, we're in uh, late April, May, June, the school year's done, and there's been a big gap where there's been no computers in the middle high school. Um, and again, this assumes that the vendor, because they haven't get paid, would want their computers back right away, which they have every right to do because um, we have not uh, compensated the vendor for the use of those computers for the last um, uh, four plus months. So with this donation that's being presented uh, to you, this would allow the Board of Selectmen to um, allocate this donated money to purchase those computers that are already installed in the school um, as a straight donation. In our discussions um, with Town Council and the Inspector General, there needs to be a start and a stop because the procurement um, was not done appropriately. Um, so. As part of that, uh, we actually have received a letter uh, from um, the vendor uh, with also a new invoice um, dated uh, last week uh, for the amount to purchase these computers. Um, so again, in weighing the, the, the benefit of the kids and being able to solve a problem, um, which is what I'm really asking you to do is, is we have an opportunity to solve an existing problem and um, I'm asking uh, for the board's authorization uh, for you to allocate uh, the funding to buy these computers directly. And I just would like to add that uh, I uh, did speak with the chair of the school committee. Uh, obviously, if we spend these monies, which were at uh, the board's discretion, uh, they were donated funds uh, to spend on other, um, on, on other items, obviously there's a concern about you know, having them go towards this, and the uh, chairman advised that they would work with us uh, over the next few months to make sure that we end up coming out whole out of the process, that the monies are not lost to us, uh, since it was in their budget to begin with, um, so that uh, there is, uh, you know, 
it, will, it will be squared as we move forward. Mr. Chairman? I personally have no problem with that. I think this is, this is probably the best way to so, uh, solve a, a problem that I'm really hoping never comes up again. Um, uh, through, Mr. through Mr. Chairman to the town administrator, if the town financial policies, which were voted on by town meeting, had been followed, would we have run into this problem? Or would it, would it's that problem potential still be there? Um, this gets into a procurement and purchase order item. Um, these computers were ordered in June. The town accountant and I didn't receive an invoice until December. So between June and December, um, we weren't able to, to catch this. I guess uh, what I'm trying to get to is, our, do we have anything in place or can we put something in place to see that this type of thing does not happen again? Yeah, I, because I, I don't want to see it, it happen, yes. you know, where the kids would lose out. Because if we don't go ahead and use these donations to pay for these now, really we're putting our kids at a disadvantage. Yeah, and I, I don't want to see that happen. No, and I, I, and I agree with you totally. I, the, the procurement law is a very... Uh, very rigid, very, very spelled out. Yep. I think this is more a case of human error where there was uh, some someone advised that the computers were uh, on the state bid list. They actually weren't, and it was, so it was human error more than anything else. If all the, uh, if all, the, if, if that had not been advised, they would have followed all and, the And I can understand human error, but I just want to make sure, one time is human error. Yep. I want to make sure it doesn't happen again. So I don't want to go from human error to trend. So I'm pretty we sure have that that won't happen. Yeah, so what we have in place is we have the town's procurement policies. Um, and with that, anything over $10,000 requires some level of procurement. If it's ten to $35,000, it requires, based upon the town's procurement requirements, and this applies to the schools and others, it requires three written bids. And with that, there's appropriate forms that have to be signed off and submitted to the uh, town accountant and to myself as the chief procurement officer that the procurement has occurred. Anything over $35,000 requires public advertisement with three vendors. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not with three vendors. It requires public advertisement through the state's goods and service bulletin um, that allows um, multiple vendors to take a look at. When that happens, then that also requires uh, the town administrator, who's the chief procurement officer's signature on that, that it's a, that it's a proper procurement. Um, tied into that, um, anything over $10,000 requires a contract. Um, so these are some of the things that are in our procurement regulations and policies. Uh, what Meg and I are gonna be looking at is uh, a purchase order type system so that there's a pre-approval prior to anyone authorizing a vendor to send anything over $10,000. Because without that approval, you don't have the ability of doing the checks and balances. So that's something that we are working on um, so that there isn't that long gap between when something was ordered and we're, we're notified of that. We can actually uh, tighten that up. Uh, again, I'm not trying to look at what happened from the standpoint of who's wrong and who's to blame. That's not the issue. The issue is, is how to solve a problem, which this donation does do um, with the gracious support of the Board of Selectmen, and to set up a procedure in the future so this doesn't happen again. Very good. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, in other words, by using uh, donated money to pay for these, that obviates the whole uh, a, a renewed procurement process in this case? Yes, there's certain exemptions within the 30B regulations, um, and it's designed to protect taxpayer dollars. Uh, since these are donated funds, these are not necessarily taxpayer dollars. And again, I just for the record, I wanna be clear, these donated funds are above and beyond the pilot that was negotiated. So that has an annual payment for X number of years at a certain dollar amount that's already stipulated. This is above and beyond that. It doesn't affect that at all. Just as a, as a follow up, um, the state bid list, <coughs> the theory behind it is that uh, the state has already put uh, those items out to bid so that you don't need to go follow some of the procurement process if you're going to be utilizing the state bid list. But I assume we still have, we, you know, the uh, department can't just go spend $50,000 and buy something off the state bid list without still following through some level of uh, uh, purchasing the item. 
That's correct. Again, in the town's procurement policies, there's a form to fill out if it, you're using a state bid list. You have to identify what bid list you're using and identify specifically on that list where the item is covered. Mm -hmm. So uh, hypothetically, um, the state bid list could cover IBM, I'm just using this, IBM's mainframe computers, which don't exist anymore. But the point being is because it says IBM, then which has happened in the past is somebody says, well, everything from IBM is covered. And they try to pass those off. No, it has to be specific for what the state procured it under. And as long as that's there in the document, basically we have to create, in essence, an audit trail uh, so that the accountant and I can go back and say, okay, on the state bid list, this widget is approved on the state bid list for this dollar amount, and you've ordered six of them and you've received them, so therefore it's a valid procurement. Well, I think this is a nice innovative solution to avoid any uh, uh, disruption to the, to the classrooms with the absence of the computers. What's the pleasure of the board? I move sure. that we vote to accept this donation for this purpose. A second? I'll second. Further discussion? That's the proper wording, right, for the motion. Okay. Correct. No further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next, sir, a fire station update. Uh, I'm going to ask the chief to join me uh, for this item. I see steel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and actually, chief, if you could, uh, in addition to talking about these two donations, um, could you first give kind of a quick overview of the status of the project? Sure. Um, as you said, we're excited uh, finally seeing some steel come out of the ground. And uh, there's been a lot of work in the ground uh, that's been going on the last few months. But now you get to see kind of the shape in, of the station. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're in the process of putting up the steel. Uh, there'll be another delivery of steel coming Thursday with uh, for the next three weeks uh, the steel fabricators are on site so they'll be building the apparatus phase the administrative areas um, and the second floor will be pouring concrete that'll be going on for about the next three weeks there's also framers there uh, portions of the buildings are wood frame and also steel frame interior right now we're, we're making good strides but obviously the weather is, is going to be fighting that what you're not seeing is to the rear of the project is the um, the training facility foundation is being um, constructed, it's being poured, some of the uh, footings were stripped today and the actual uh, foundation will be built tomorrow and hopefully poured on Friday depending on the weather. We have hired an erector, uh, the training facility is actually on site, it's out back uh, stacked, uh, the steel and all the um, materials. We hired an erector that will be coming in, it looks like around the second week of February to start that part of the project, which is part of the project but not under the contractor for the fire station. Um, I will report that um, we are very happy with our uh, contractor, Emma O'Connor. Um, we've developed a very good relationship with uh, them, their staff, uh, certainly our project management uh, under um, Joe Sullivan and, um, and the design team of KBA. It seems like right now we're all uh, kind of clicking together really well, uh, working through any issues. Uh, there's always some issues that come up, but um, I, think, I think it's going pretty smooth. Uh, How the, are we doing schedule? Yeah, the, the, we are, the, the project is scheduled to be completed, I think, the second week of September. Uh, right now, they're predicting we could be about a month behind schedule, but really the schedule doesn't mean much really right now. I mean, it fluctuates so much on a weekly basis. Their attitude is, hey, when the weather gets better, we'll bring in more people and, and try to get back on schedule. And So there's really no red flags there for us. Um, the other issue any project uh, struggles with is obviously the budget. Um, I can say I feel very good about the budget right now. Um, we're on track. Uh, I think we're a little bit certainly under budget. Um, you know, so again, we'll work through some issues and, and uh, most of them have come up ahead on them. So with some creativity. So I think uh, I'm feeling right now pretty good about the project. I don't want to get too far into it. I mean, as far as anything can happen. Which uh, gets done first. The station or the new engines? Uh, um, the engines will be in before the station. <laughs> um, that's another issue, uh, but that is going well too. So, but again, on the fire station, I, I think there's a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes by your town administrator and our committee, and uh, we're pleased. We're pleased with the contractor as of yet. So, it's always good. K 
can you talk a little bit about the uh, the burn building and how we purchased the burn building? This is another one of sure. Craig's creative research projects that is actually saving the town money. Just like how we bought the three fire engines from not the state procurement bid list, but we're allowed to use in certain circumstances other bid list and the fire engines we purchased off a Houston bid list. Um, you know, through some research, and, and again, it's a team effort, we all try to do what we can, but we found a, um, a government services association, GSA, they provide um, a bid that you can buy off of, and not many communities know about that. And uh, we did some research on it, myself and uh, Chief Harriman, and we found that we will edge, one of the things you could buy <coughs> off was training facilities, even though it wasn't spelled out that way. Uh, so myself and, and Elaine was a big part of that meeting. Um, we met with this gentleman and he advised us how to do the process. And uh, we procured the building <coughs> that way, which saved us, there were actually two price lists that you used. If you bought it conventionally and what you'd buy it off on the GSA bid list. And by doing that, I, I think it was between thirty and forty thousand dollars in savings. Um, and what it does is it allows you to buy off a bid list and actually buy what you want instead of trying to, you know, solicit bids and, and might not get exactly what you want. So it took all the middle <coughs> men. Um, you know, we're going to look at it for other projects that come up or any, any, you can buy a lot of things off it. We're buying some equipment actually for the fire engines off it. Um, we found some things in there we can buy. So, you know, again, we call it, as, as Michael says, creative financing and, and trying to find ways to lower the price, lower the number. And, and again, it, it's just my trying to get to the end of the project is where I have my biggest concerns with any project. It's just unknowns until it's finally complete. So anything we can save now is money. I don't know what the right word is, but we just put aside and, and uh, make sure we, we have it if we need it and obviously return if we don't. So that's the federal government equivalent of a state bid list. Um, and just I just want to point out one more example of showing some of the creativity of the committee. Uh, when we were looking to keep this project under budget, um, the chief wanted to put in a marquee sign out front with the, the, the billboard. And in looking at that, and, and I'll let you go into the details, but it was going to be cost prohibitive for us to put that through the design bid, I mean, through the bid contract. So what we did is uh, we actually had the contractor as part of the base bid install the electricity to the location, and we're going to go out and buy the billboard off of one of these um, systems. There's a lot of different oh, yeah. items, obviously, with any project, and the school will face <coughs> the same challenges that. Um, there's some things that are better to buy through a contractor and there's things that are better to buy yourself. And usually when you can buy it yourself, you can be creative. And you know, as long as you stay within the guidelines, you can be creative and shop around. So, so we'll do that on, on a number of items. Um, you know, there are a lot of items in the station that we're looking at through outside ways and whether it's donations or, you know, or they're just creative financing. Um, that might have been part of the project that now we're gonna take out. Um, the other thing is, again, the re relationship we've developed with the uh, contractor, which I don't know if it's always the case, and hopefully it continues to go that way. You know, they, they will work with us in procuring items. In some items, you're better off just buying through a contractor because then we don't have to go through a procurement process, which, which can get very messy on some items. Um, so there'll be some items in the station that we might pay a little more of a premium for uh, because the contractor will put a markup profit on which I think is reasonable, and, and they've been negotiable on some items. But I think that markup is certainly worth the expense, what you would pay in lawyer fees and, and time lost that you have to do some of these things. So um, so there will be some things that, you know, we, we juggle back and forth to what's the best way to buy them. So, um, so we have uh, two items down here where we have donations. I'm going to talk about the second one first and, and have the chief talk about the first one. Um, as you may recall, um, um, Craig Weston and his father and, um, uh, utilized a lot of their equipment this summer, um, uh, this past spring to actually go through and level the site. And they donated, donated in a, a large amount of hours of their equipment and their time doing that. In addition to that, uh, most recently, uh, there was a need to bring in some additional material on the site, sand and, and other fill. And uh, Gary Weston and, and Craig also stepped up to the plate to make those donations as well. So I felt it was appropriate uh, that although Craig likes to and Gary like to keep a little quiet on these things, I thought it was appropriate to, to publicly thank them. And I asked them to kind of quantify what the value of that was. Uh, what you see listed out here is uh, almost $40,000 
um, that they have personally donated in material and in-kind and equipment use, uh, which in turn has saved orders of magnitude that amount of, that the town doesn't have to pay, which is another way of keeping this project under budget. So thank you, Chief. Um, thank you. I'd like to make a comment on that. There was, uh, excuse me, Mr. Slugman, really. That, I, that was I, well, I have the authority to make a comment. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> right? you do. Um, he can still take it, he, but don't even start. I have, I've seen the things that you and your family have done towards this project. I'm sure that is a conservative number. And, and I greatly, for our town, and I've been here a long time, so I'm thanking you from a lot of people. <laughs> uh, but thank you for all the extra effort that you put into this project. It's been great. And if I may, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> Craig, I have pictures. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, also, I think, you know, a department reflects the values of its chief and chief officers and this has really been a whole department project with a lot of firefighters putting in a lot of time in prepping the site, tearing down the old site, and that they'll be doing a lot of the work getting the station ready to be moved in. And so I want to pass on you know, our thanks to not only you and your dad, but to the uh, Deputy Germain and the entire department. Thank you for that. Good. Sure, I missed the too, but. You're going to pay for that later. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, Do I have to drive another backhoe? I mean, a loader? <laughs> you know, the real reason that was even mentioned was um, we just wanted to make sure through the town administrator that someone didn't think we were doing something inappropriate by, um, you know, giving material or something. You know, you, you, you're doing a project and all of a sudden you're, you know, giving materials, looked at selling material to the project, which, you know, isn't the case at all. So it was really just to make sure that um, covered ourselves. Do we need to vote to accept that, or? Uh, I'd like you to vote to accept both of these, but you can do it individually if you'd like. I, I move that we um, accept the donation from Franklin Marsh LLC and Western Cranberry Corp. I'll second that. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? With thanks. And what is this Mr. about Walsh? a donation sure, from Pilgrim Nuclear uh, Power Plant? Yes, um, I, I really am um, very excited to let you know, and, and I wish, um, uh, EMA director uh, Tom Walsh was here. Uh, we, I had been working with him um, for about a year, a little over a year now, uh, with Entergy Nuclear Power Plant on, on trying to receive from funds for the station. Obviously, we were having some financial problems, and uh, we recognized that in the beginning, and we were looking out trying to figure out how to solve them. Uh, Tom has been ins inspirational in uh, working with Entergy. And uh, we had put a request in that Entergy was looking to fund the generator at the site and any electrical and technology associated with that. And we estimated that around $190,000 for the project. So we presented them with that uh, request and it was um, entertained very positively. This was back a year ago and, and um, Tom spent, you know, many, a lot of time working with them in that process. Um, you know, obviously, about a few months ago, they announced that they were going to be closing. And, you know, obviously, you can read the writing on the wall pretty, you know, that that money was not going to come to fruition, which really we were hoping for. And, um, you know, that we were notified, uh, Tom was notified in December um, through the vice president, I believe, of Entergy that uh, they were going to honor that request. And uh, they actually made the official donation in December. Um, uh, the prerequisite was that the money would be used for the fire station and it would be uh, funneled through the emergency management department of the town, which it was. Um, I just think it's very important uh, for the board to recognize uh, Tom. Uh, he 100% got this money um, and he um, should, should re just be thanked by the board at some point. Um, but what was really evident, and it came directly from the vice president of Entergy, was uh, they certainly didn't have to give this money, and they certainly had no obligation to give it when they just announced that they were going to be closing. And uh, his comment was, uh, well, not every town uh, works as well with Entergy as Carver does. And it was a direct reflection of the um, EOC uh, and how it's run and how professional it is and how serious um, people in this town take that. Uh, but that obviously starts at the top in how it's managed. And 
And again, that came directly from the Vice President of Entergy that uh, that played a big role in the decision of whether they were going to include that in their budget. And uh, so I think that was um, a lot of hard work paid off. And um, so we did accept that donation. And, um, yeah. you know, we'll. Yeah, I, 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 I was startled to see that they followed through on that. That yeah. really does speak, I think, to uh, uh, what Call. the town has done uh, in, in working with, with them. I mean, I, thanks to Entergy for following through and living up to the commitment. and. But also the work that Tom has done as a EMA director, too. I, I, absolutely. I was going to say that obviously it sounds as if uh, that without Tom, this money is probably not coming absolutely would not have to us. So our thanks to uh, Tom Walsh, our, uh, who both in, is in charge of the ambulance service and uh, our uh, emergency, ma emergency management uh, department. Can we make that a motion, Ron? Yes. yes. Have special thanks to Tom Walsh for his efforts on this donation program. In, in, in addition to accepting the donation? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. You have I, a second? I second that. Further discussion? Uh, I, I, he's, I mean, we've been through emergency management drills, all of us. Uh, they are run very efficiently, and, and always the, uh, the program directors for the state, um, they commend the program. And so mm -hmm. his uh, connection with... Uh, uh, the nuclear folks, Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant, has been very close. And so uh, he's. this is well worth our efforts of thanks. And the department is run very professionally. There's no question. Right. Yeah, I've, I've bumped into some of the uh, uh, folks that uh, from Entergy that run the programs uh, outside of, you know, the programs here, bumping into them just in other facets of life. And... Uh, they speak so quickly about the professionalism that he, he, again they distinguish the fact that uh, the the way Carver is run is not the way every town is run. So that's uh, that's a tribute to the jo job that uh, Tom does. So Good there's been a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, we accept the hundred ninety thousand dollar donation. And, uh, we will give Craig some credit, but give uh, Tom Walsh most of the credit. <laughs> Thank um, you. Does a fantastic so job in this community. The, the next motion will be to adopt uh, to accept the 190,000. No, that was no, that we, we did a combined. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Craig. Uh, now uh, it's uh, well. I guess this is you. <coughs> this is under your update. <laughs> uh, the next item is uh, now that we have the fire station under construction. Uh, and we have the school approved. Uh, the next major capital project for the town is uh, to prolong uh, the life expectancy of the middle high school. And um, through, and, and we've talked about this last year, through many conversations we've had with Dave Siegentoff, um, the school, middle, the middle high school structurally is, in, in, is a solid building uh, that can last another 25, 30 years if, if we maintain it. And core to maintaining it is replacing the roof, uh, which is our number one priority. Uh, right now, the life expectancy of the roof is 20 years. It's when you're 28, it has leaks. Uh, so this becomes a priority for us to move forward. Tied into that, um, town meeting approved the article um, at the annual town meeting to not only fund a new roof, uh, but also to fund a new boiler and some new windows in the building all of which uh, will require a reimbursement from the MSBA. The MSBA will uh, reimburse 50% of the cost. So the process is we, we voted this money prior to making an application because we were too late last year to put in the application. Uh, the application uh, started, uh, process started earlier this month and ends in early February. Uh, several steps in the process is that the school committee uh, has to make a vote uh, to send in the application as well as the executive officers of the town. So what I'm requesting the Board of Selectmen to do is to authorize a vote to submit our statement of interest to MSBA uh, for the roof repair, boiler, and windows at the middle high school as approved at town meeting. Again, this, in my estimation, is our next top priority where we need to uh, put all hands on deck to get this done and have this roof replaced as soon as possible. I'd so like to make that motion. I'll second. 
And just to add is that this is, it's not as if this is just coming up. This has been in our capital plan <coughs> that we develop every year, and it's just, you know, this number is coming up. And so it's well, it's also the money that's already been voted on at town meeting. Exactly. So, correct. I mean, it's not like we're going out and asking for even more money. This had already been approved by the town. I do have one question, though. We also approved the money for uh, the new septic fields. Uh, is that eligible for reimbursement by MSBA? No, septic is not. They okay. will, uh, for uh, repairs, they will do roof, uh, boiler systems, and they will do doors and windows. Uh, so that's what we put in for, um, um, and uh, at the tune of, um, uh, when you look at, when we go to issue the bond again on this, um, we're going to need, author well, we did receive authorization for the full amount. Uh, which is uh, pushing over $7 million, uh, again, of which 50% of that will be reimbursed by MSBA. Um, once it's approved by MSBA, then MSBA actually assigns a project manager uh, for this, uh, so we don't have to go through the same selection process we did for the school. Uh, one question I had, uh, we had the high school, mm -hmm. then we built the junior high school, and then we sort of have merged everything since then. When we're talking about the new roof, is this over the entire building? Entire complex. The entire complex, including the newer section. Correct. Okay. Which is no longer newer. But it's newer than the older section. How old is it now? It's uh, 97. It was built in 97. Was it? Yeah. The, the junior high school, what, what was the addition, it? Two additions were added in 97. You know, I, I, I always just... Uh, my so it's coming up on, it's, it's, our, it's coming up on 20, 20 years, years too, so. Let's replace the whole thing. Okay. Uh, all right. So it's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? There being none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The nays. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. The next item, Mr. Chairman, is just a really brief update. Um, I've been uh, meeting with, uh, uh, starting uh, last year, um, last calendar year, our counterparts in our budding towns, uh, working with SERPED and also the old, plan, <coughs> old Colony Planning Council. Um, who was made available through the governor's uh, compact award um, as one of our three priorities. And uh, we're looking at um, municipal shared opportunities um, uh, with our budding town to see where there may be the ability of um, looking at uh, figuring out a way of, of partnering or, or joining services <coughs> on certain items that would be beneficial to both communities. Uh, I don't want to get into any detail right now because we're in the very preliminary stages of that. Uh, we're probably going to be having our next meeting um, um, in early February, uh, but this work is ongoing. Uh, yeah, I just would add to that that uh, on the, uh, the uh, Area 58 Community Access Cable, which brought together the towns of Plimpton, H uh, Halifax, and Carver, um, it's apparently from hearing the feedback I'm getting from the folks in Halifax and Plimpton, it's uh, generated some, a lot of excitement inside their government circles about the possibility of what else can we do, uh, you know, in terms of regionalization. So that I know we're getting some guidance from the state. Uh, you're having, you've started conducting meetings with, um, with uh, some of the folks. And we're not just confined, to obviously, to Halifax and Plimpton, but, Correct. Um, you know, I think uh, as... Uh, we discussed during the audit, you know, we're a small town with out a large industrial base. So anywhere we can regionalize and saving, you know, five or $10,000 here or there throughout, <coughs> our, throughout our budget adds up over time. So um, let's keep moving forward on that project. The next item, unfortunately, isn't with uh, good news, um, but it's also good that we're making a decision to not um, spend good money on a bad project, um, is the Forest, Recre uh, Forest Street Recreation Project. Um, that was approved um, at annual town meeting uh, through CPA funds in excess of $400,000 to create uh, fields on that Forest Street project. Uh, when we hired the consultant to move the project forward this year, they started doing some due diligence. Um, DPW went down and dug a bunch of test holes. And um, what they found is that the site is an old stump dump. And um, at some points, they couldn't even reach the bottom of the stumps. And I think that their backhoe had a 20-foot uh, extension on it. 
So in some places, it's more than 20 feet deep. As a result of that, uh, when you're looking to come in and put down irrigation uh, to, to level the field out, bring in field fill to do that, if you have the stumps that are uh, decomposing at different speeds, you're going to have small sinkholes or large sinkholes, uh, which would, in essence, destroy the field. Um, the cost uh, to uh, correct it uh, would have exceeded over a million dollars to remove all the stumps and then bring in new fill. And the Recreation Committee felt that that was uh, not good money to spend on the project, and nor could they afford to do that. Uh, so they made the real tough decision, and um, they're going to be coming to the board in the near future with a more detailed analysis um, where they're, they're going to abandon the project. Um, I think that they're going to look at some temporary solutions that could be easily done by the DPW just to maintain it as a field. And if a little sinks here and a little sinks there, then, then so be it. But it's not going to be a structured play area where you're going to have irrigation and so forth uh, with that. Um, so unfortunately, we have spent um, you know, some good money looking at this alternative and several others. Um, uh, with the town and um, we don't have a project to show for it, but um, good management is knowing when to say when and, and that's what they're doing is they're saying before we get into spending real money on this project, you know, orders of magnitude of money, it's time to pull the plug uh, because we're never going to get ahead of this. Now keep in mind, um, Oh, and on that, they're going to be coming back and, and looking to probably have the uh, CPA reallocate those funds back into its unrestricted funds and then look for another project. Um, when this project was approved, um, the school project uh, had not blossomed to the extent that it has right now with the multi-sports uh, uh, complex, if you will, that's on there um, that's going to satisfy a lot of the needs that this forestry project was going to do. So although we're giving up that project, we're actually having a better project being done across the street that will still satisfy the recreation needs. So all's not lost, but again, we're making the right decision not to spend good money on a bad project. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, the next item is discussion of our annual town meeting. I've got a couple items on there. Uh, the first is the DOR report on the possible reorganization of our finance departments based upon best practices. Um, DOR is looking at our peer communities um, and they're going to be analyzing, and they are analyzing Carver compared to many similar size communities with similar demographics and similar budgets. Uh, trying to get the best matches. With that, they're also looking at best practices uh, from a financial management standpoint. And um, you know, I think we heard from the from our auditor today that things are, are are getting better, but we still have several deficiencies that need to be done. And the question is, are those deficiencies more structure related? And I anticipate that DOR is going to be having that uh, report hopefully at our next meeting. And again, I, I half joked um, they were sh targeting for tonight to do it, but um, there was a town that um, that will go nameless at this point uh, that financially imploded uh, in the month of December, which meant they had to divert all their staff there to help bail that town out. And um, but not us. It was not us. You oh, heard that's good. We're, we're doing much better than our peers. You heard from <laughs> the auditor, so we're we're not in that that lower echelon, the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. Um, that all being said is I do anticipate them coming uh, to our next meeting um, on February 2nd uh, to hopefully present again, barring anything unforeseen. Now, along with looking at the financial components of the town, and the, whether that's the treasurer collector's office, the accountant's office, uh, or the, um, the assessor's office, um, there's also two other major functions that need to be addressed as well. And, and that is um, Elaine has been doing Yeoman's job on many different fronts, but one of those fronts has been on procurement. And uh, we need to um, provide some additional resources so we can create a central procurement office um, so we don't run into some of the issues that <coughs> just happened with the computers and other items so that all procurement is, is more or less standardized in the town. 
and, um, and, and it provides better accountability for them. Uh, the second, and Elaine's also been, been working on this among her 50 other tasks, is, um, and this is something that we brought up in prior meetings, um, and I believe it was part of our budget discussion last year when the selectmen uh, asked, well, when are we gonna start doing you know, performance reviews on individuals? And, and I said, well, uh, as soon as possible, but it's not gonna be in 2016. And the reason for that is in order to uh, do proper um, performance reviews for municipal employees, you can't just do it on one department. You have to do all employees in the town in a similar fashion. In order to do that, you have to roll out a full HR program um, that would allow that to occur and train um, all of the managers on the proper techniques for setting up goals, objectives for their employees for the year and then having regular meetings to make sure they're meeting their objectives. Um, and, and it's one of those things you don't do half-baked, you do it the right way because there's only one way to do it because there's too many labor laws tied into this. Uh, so that's also going to be part of the DOR recommendations is to standardize that function as well. Um, until we get it standardized, we'll have to bring in some external consulting support uh, to get us over that hump and get everybody trained in FY17. Uh, uh, I do plan on putting uh, some money in our budget for that as well uh, to get us over that hump. Uh, so you're going to see that as part of the DOR report. So on top of uh, re-tinkering or, or readjusting uh, our, our finance department structure, there's also going to be the aspect of the human resource and also of the centralized procurement. Any questions on that? Stay tuned. Um, let's see, uh, update on the school budget. Um, I attended the, uh, the school committee meeting last week and um, I'm very pleased to say, as I've told you all, that um, the school did approve the FY17 budget and it is consistent with the town's financial policies as approved by town meeting. Um, so that will eliminate um, uh, the annual spring ranker that you normally have year over year um, so that uh, again we're all on the same page going into the into town meeting and then the last item here for uh, discussion of annual town meeting is I have a handed out I believe everyone has this a proposed 2016 annual town meeting and election schedule does everyone have that mm -hmm. I want to point out a couple things here um, Again, we're looking at the annual town meeting on April 11th, and then the, um, the elections would be the following, um, uh, the elections would be the following Saturday, um, and the elections is, is dictated by, uh, our, by our bylaws. Now, with that, um, with the April 11th, I just wanna work ourselves backwards because that's, that's kind of how we have to put these schedules together. The April 4th is the last day for the warrant to be posted uh, for the public to, to review, uh, which means um, that um, we have it set in here and you'll see later in your <coughs> next meetings a proposed uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting on Wednesday, March 30th to vote on the final warrant. Uh, then from there, I'm gonna just jump forward um, to nomination papers. Um, so the last day to uh, obtain nomination papers is March 3rd, and the last day to submit nomination papers is March 7th. Um, so those will be available at the town clerk. Uh, I have one here also March 11th, if you may recall at the last annual town meeting, um, the governance committee recommended certain financial milestones to meet town meetings uh, timetable and that was 30 days prior to the town meeting, is that the final budget needs to be approved uh, by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, and that budget is then available for public review 30 days prior to town meeting, so that need, means that has to be done by March 11th. Uh, from there, uh, we've tentatively uh, scheduled a joint finance committee, board of selectmen uh, of hearings on all the town budgets uh, for February 27th uh, as a target date. <coughs> um, I have one here, the last date for submission of articles by boards and committee is February 16th. 
Um, by uh, Thursday, um, February 11th, um, we'll be submitting the final balance budget, the town budget, to the FinCom. They have 60 days to review that, uh, as do the Board of Selectmen. Proposing the last day for citizens' petitions to be February 2nd. And, um, and also tied into the new bylaws that were passed is all boards and committees need to submit all their funding requests to the Board of Selectmen by Wednesday the 27th. And I do want to say that I have received all proper requests from all appropriate boards, committees, and departments. So that is all in place. So I tried to, with Lynn's help, try to lay out, if you will, the calendar for important dates coming up, whether it's elections, whether it's the town meeting, whether it's warrants, um, and uh, where we're gonna have different finance reviews. So with that, um, uh, since the selectmen did announce that when the town meeting was gonna be on April 11th, um, what we need to do is to, to vote this or to modify this so that everyone knows when um, the article deadlines are as well. Mr. Chairman, I move that we go ahead and accept the proposed 2016 annual town meeting and election schedule as presented to us. Second. Further discussion? There being none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Uh, two more quick items. Um, uh, one is the joint facilities um, report. Uh, that is underway. The consultants have been meeting both with uh, town and school personnel, and um, we hope to have that report also in later February. So that's coming around the corner as well. So hopefully by mid-February then? Uh, I'm hoping, yeah. I'm hoping. And as far as our capital budget, um, we do have all the requests in from the different departments and uh, we'll be working through that to also release that uh, to the capital outlay committee um, probably around the same time as the budget on February 11th um, so that they can then start their review. Um, I did speak to Jack Angley and told him that this is coming and we'll be looking for a capital outlay meeting in February to, to kick <coughs> off that process. Um, but that look, that'll follow the same process that's done for the last two years. Uh, where there'll be a, a balanced budget that'll be submitted and then from there then the um, the capital ILA committee have the ability of making any adjustments up or down based upon their internal and third party review of what's going on. Um, and uh, my last comment that's just not on here but I just want to just uh, mention it um, to the board uh, and our department head meeting this morning um, um, I'm trying to look at 2017, um, trying to as a, as a transition year, so to speak. Uh, the last two plus years, we've uh, successfully, I think, worked on um, having the community come together and uh, some of the, um, the political fighting that was occurring in the past has, has, uh, has quieted down and, and everyone's working uh, for the same objectives. Uh, we've got the, pro the fire station project underway, the school project's been approved, and our financial policies uh, are being followed and implemented, and that is key to our bonding and our, our bond rating, as our auditor said. Um, we also know that there's been some staffing changes with our uh, permittings and inspection departments. Uh, we're going to be having potentially some staffing modifications with the DOR report if the board accepts their report uh, or their recommendation. Uh, where I'm getting to is that uh, for 2017 is that um, we really want to take a, some time to do internal working within the town structure. Um, uh, everyone's doing a great job, but now as we move our HR piece forward, we can do some internal um, self-review and working internally to, to make our organization function even better than it does today. I think it works very well today, but when you're dealing with all these major projects, you sometimes don't have time to deal with the nuts and the bolts. And for 2017, we really want to take a deep breath and try to make sure that that's all running on all cylinders. And we, you know, we know we have a couple little modifications that need to be done, and we're going to work through those. But really getting our management structure to, 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 to do some fine tuning uh, throughout everyone. So. 
Uh, with that, um, um, five minutes over. Which for you is not bad. <laughs> uh, Considering you had 10 minutes extra to start with. Board of Selectmen <laughs> comment period. Mr. Dunham? Well, let Mr. Ward go first. All right, Mr. Ward. Uh, I, my uh, big thing uh, was to point out or remind everybody that the master plan committee, and maybe Sarah was going to mention it because she's on it, but um, the master plan committee uh, has a open forum meeting this Thursday, and that is a very important meeting. And uh, I was at the AGCOM meeting last night and pointing out to the AGCOM the importance of input at that meeting on Thursday night. Now, uh, it involves every aspect of our town and, and where we're going for the next, is it five-year or 10-year plan? It's Sorry, supposed to be a five-year plan. Okay, a five-year plan. And I don't know if it's possible. I'm going, but one of my big concerns is I'm, I've been working on the Kava Cares uh, Committee, and that's the drug program. And uh, that's moving forward, and there's a grant that's involving us with, with Plymouth and Middleborough. But I'm wondering, you know, we need to put that, that important issue, and I don't even call that an issue, it's a catastrophe that we have to address. And I'm wondering if that can be, I'm going to suggest that maybe we have some kind of a plan in there. I know the police department has a plan, five-year plan, to uh, help with the law enforcement and education and the resource officer uh, possibilities. And so uh, that meeting, I just want to make sure that everybody, that we can get there and have some input. It's so important. Um, I guess that's a wrap for me. Thank you, yes. I, I, I too would like to um, reiterate the importance of the people coming to this master plan um, meeting. It's not just a meeting of the committee. It's supposed to be a meeting of the community. Yeah, it's an open forum. Right, so um, I remember the first one I ever went to, we had 75 people, which is actually a quorum for town meeting. Uh, and it, it, was, it was terrific, it was really, <laughs> made it sound like very much, but that's pretty good for that sort of thing. So this is a chance for people to really express uh, what they think is important for our community. And that's Thursday night at 7 p.m. And where's that going to be held here, right here? I think it's right here. That's what I, that's my understanding. Would anybody else have any, I, is it at, mm -hmm. you looking perfect, Scott? I'm wondering if it's at school. It might be, I, that, I'm not on that committee, I'm just really. That's where it was in the past, Scott. I agree. I know all of our committee uh, meetings have been here, school, but it's on the school calendar. oh, okay. So uh, maybe it is know, at the I high school. No, I, I think it is because I think they wanted surfaces to set up tables. Oh, and oh stuff like okay. That. So it is at the high school then. I believe so. Okay, very good. That's excellent. Thank you. I also wanted to point out that the Young People's Alliance of Carver, otherwise known as YPAC, is in um, has a. Um, an MOU, a memo of understanding uh, with the school and the police department and, and is in partnership with the school police department and Carver Cares. Um, one of the reasons, <clears throat> this may not be, <clears throat> have been made very clear to the public in the past, but uh, one of the reasons we established <clears throat> YPAC in the first place was because of the uh, drug issues in town. And what YPAC is trying to do is to be proactive. Um, sometimes it's when you, when you come to the problem after the fact, it's too late. So we're trying to um, allow kids to learn how to make good choices, good decisions, um, self-respect, self-esteem, that sort of thing, um, <clears throat> almost without them knowing it, <laughs> hopefully, by the programs that we've instituted. So I wanted, I wanted to thank the school again. Scott, I wanna thank you and, and um, and just everyone who is working on this. It's a, it's a joint effort, <clears throat> and we're trying to make it a positive one. Um, the last thing I wanted to say was I wanted to really uh, <clears throat> thank the DPW. I know they've been getting dumped on in some of the social media because when people cross into the 
Plymouth line or some other line, the roads are, you know, crystal clear. Um, I wanted to make it clear to people who may be new to town or who may not un quite understand how this, these things work, but most of us here in town have well water. And the DPW is very careful not to use as much salt as some towns do. Um, we use a mixture of sand and salt. And um, <clears throat> I was also informed today that if we used more salt, uh, the salt is actually very expensive and we're very fortunate to have sand as a resource here in Carver. Um, but the salt goes straight down through our beautiful Carver sand, our soil, and can contaminate our groundwater. And so the DPW is, it, it's a real fine balancing act and I think they do a terrific job every year. So I just wanted to get that out there and the why. <laughs> Okay, well, we've made it all through the holiday season. I hope everybody had good hol holidays and was able to spend time with family and friends. And as we move forward into a new year, it's another new year for the town of Carver that we work together. We've come together for the school to uh, got rid of a lot of consternation and arguing that we used to go on for that. So that's a project we're moving forward on, moving forward with a new fire station. It won't be long, we'll be able to move forward with a new police station, another three or four years. Um, but also, now that we're into the new year, don't forget the food pantry because there are those, just because the holidays are over doesn't mean the, ne doesn't mean the need goes away. So remember, if you can you know, pick up a couple extra things next time you're at Shaw's or uh, Stop and Shop, you know, pick something up for those who are a little less fortunate. And other than that, I hope Helen's feeling better and can make it here for the next meeting. Helen's home with a flu and a high fever. Yeah, my, uh, my apologies. I should have uh, mentioned at the very start of the meeting that uh, we are missing our uh, select woman, uh, Helen Maroney, uh, who is down with a good case of the flu. So that, uh, Helen, we wish you were here with us. Is that opposed um, to a bad case of the I flu? I've never heard of a good say, case of the flu. I kind of like bad flu. <laughs> <laughs> we're just in a critical mood of the chair this evening. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, it's just it's it's like, you're the chair. It's like being at home. Um, <laughs> Well, the, uh, <laughs> also, I did not mention, because we sort of went out of turn with the, uh, the Cub Scouts here, uh, that uh, this meeting is being cable cast by Area 58 Community Access Media, Channel 15. A um, couple of things I just wanted to mention, uh, uh, speaking of the food pantry, I don't know if everyone's aware that when Edaville closed up uh, for the year, all the extra food they had in inventory, that uh, could uh, they, they basically <coughs> passed it on to the food pantry. Yeah yogurts and juices and all sorts of uh, food. So I thought that they should get recognition, uh, Edaville should get recognition for having thought of us and uh, provided that for the food pantry. Um, uh, I, I may have missed it. The, uh, uh, when were we continuing that meeting on Wenham Road? I thought the owners were gonna be back. Uh, I thought that was supposed to be this meeting. Is, do we, is that gonna be the next meeting? Okay. Uh, I first know we're or second meeting I waiting on the owner's availability to be here. Um, so I just wanted to inquire about that. So that should be at the next meeting? Okay. Um, I also want to congratulate the Carver Police Department. They had a uh, very large and successful drug bust. Uh, and uh, reading through the press release and so forth, it's impressive the work that uh, our own uh, officers put into that. Uh, thanks to the chief and uh, his uh, officers. Michael, do you remember the name? Were there sp some specific officers that we should be citing for their uh, efforts? Uh, I, I think it's a team effort. And the detectives, all the detectives were working on that. Yeah, so anyway, it was, uh, I'm sure most of you might probably saw it in the paper, but apparently it's, uh, it was uh, a really, took a lot of uh, valuable street drugs off the street, so compliments to the uh, police department. Uh, I have been in touch with the chair of the school committee, and we will be starting our meetings up again. I've solicited, uh, actually, Dick, I think I haven't heard from you in terms of. I'm open, any one of those, one okay. of you guys do, I'll make. All right, I will get together then with, um, the chair of the school committee will pick a date and we'll get those meetings going again. Uh, speaking of the school committee, I'd like to recognize that we have our superintendent, new superintendent in waiting, less than uh, 60 days to go, Scott Neef. Coming close. Yep. Welcome. And uh, the only other thing I'll say is uh, go Patriots. <laughs> here, here. The big game, three o'clock on Sunday. And uh, so that we wish them well uh, at the same time, so. 
that's, I believe, all we have. We'll move on now to the personal health insurance look back period policy, which is going to require an explanation. That's personnel, not personal. That's correct. Personnel. Can we look up? That makes more sense. Yeah, that does make, make more sense, yeah. Um, What's an A or, or an E between? Barnes getting beat on the head. Completely that's okay. Word. No, that's okay. <laughs> like I say, it's like being at home. Uh, personnel <laughs> health insurance look back period policy. What the heck is that? Um, this is the ACA, which is the Affordable Care Act. Um, it is something that is being mandated by the IRS and all um, businesses in, whether you're a business government, whomever you may be, in the uh, United States has to have um, a report that goes to the IRS every year. Um, and um, you're looking down at it. I'm sorry. Am I... <laughs> no, no, I, no, I'm, I'm just still trying to figure out exactly what it is. Um, we have to report um, whether we are offering affordable health care to our employees, anyone that works more than 30 hours per week for um, every week for six months. Because we just went into a new payroll system, we can only have a look back period for six months. So we will be looking from July 1st until December 30th, 31st of this year, of last year, I'm sorry, 2015. Um, and we will be looking at anyone that possibly should have been offered health insurance. If they work more than 30 hours, more a week, we should be offering them this. It doesn't mean that they're going to accept it. It just means that we have to offer it to them. And it is the lowest paid insurance that we have to report. And so then, then you make a report that you've done this. That so it's correct. really a compliance yes, it issue? Is. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, but It'll it end up costing us more money in the long run, but we won't go into that. Let's not get into that. If um, we don't do this um, in the fiscal year of 16, um, by the time we get to fiscal, I'm sorry, calendar year of 17, we will be fined. Um, we won't be fine only because we have been um, complying with what they want to be done, which is going to any meetings, um, getting this in place, which that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now is to ask if I could get your approval on this. So you, you need our approval to adopt the, this as policy? That is correct. It's a town policy now. When you adopt it, it's a town policy. Yes. I'd like to make that motion to I'll adopt this as town policy. I'll second it. Further discussion? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Wasn't, that e wasn't that easy, Paula? I'm sorry. But not easy. I guess. Thank you, Paula. The is Thank not you. nearly as Thank bad you. as people say he is. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I have a news update for uh, Sarah. You are correct. It'll be at the Carver High School Library this Thursday, the 21st at 7 p.m. Thank you, Michael. Carver High School Library. Okay. Correct. For the master plan. Yep. All right, we have already accepted the nice $150 donation from Cub Scout Pack 63 for the food pantry. So the Lakeville Animal Shelter Agreement. I'd like to move that we <coughs> um, vote to authorize this agreement between the town of, towns of Lakeville and Carver regarding using the uh, Lakeville Animal Shelter for housing stray and surrendered Carver dogs. I'll second that. And again, for those that may not be aware, we have an arrangement with the town of Lakeville uh, where um, when uh, a stray or a dog is lost, that's where <coughs> the dog or cat or ferret or whatever it might be is taken uh, and cared for, uh, just mm -hmm. as if we had our own facility. No cat. Pardon me? No cat. Oh, no cat? Just, just dogs. Okay. Right. No ferrets no either? Ferret. No. no ferrets. No ferrets. Darn. All right, I misspoke again. <laughs> You're having a good keeping, night there, yeah, Mr. Those Chairman. Those are keeping score. I think we're up to five. It was a program. Okay. So. Uh, I, I've had a little experience of that going over there and seeing the facility. And we are lucky to be able to have such an agreement um, because we only pay by the, the animal on a given day. So I think it's $11 we would pay. So any time we pay is when we have an animal that goes over there. So uh, I think when I looked at it, we were like about between one and two thousand dollars a year on costs to cover that. 
which was pretty pretty minimal when you figure if you want to try to build your own it's like 350 grand or something plus staffing oh, yeah. right yeah. And maintenance yeah so we have a motion and a second further discussion those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. Those opposed the ayes have it Next on the agenda, Tom's Auto Service approval to <coughs> change name in the Class II license to Tom's Auto, Inc. So moved. Second. Further discussion? I guess I just note that Tom's Auto is owned by Jason. So he's going to call him Jason. So. Um, That's across from McDonald's. I believe yeah. so, yeah. Yep. Uh, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. We have a Chapter 61A land, uh, Richard A. Johnson, Zero Rear South Meadow Road. Richard Johnson has sent notification in compliance with Mass General Law Chapter 61A, Chapter 14, uh, or, or Article 14, for the intended sale and change of use of property to be intended for use for construction and operation of a solar farm. I'd like to move that we <coughs> that the town not exercise our right of first refusal to purchase this land. Is there a second? Second. In the past, it has not been uncommon to get the, have the planning board normally um, weigh in on. Um, the way it works is there's a town committee called, um, I forget what it's even called anymore, but the, all the um, land use departments get together mm -hmm. and they, they give their recommendations to the planner and the agent, conservation agent. I just know that normally Jack used to do that sometimes to speak to us. On well, this one's pretty pretty straight, Mr. Chair. You're going to use it for solar projects. Signed by the planning board and conservation. Can I borrow this? I was simply pointing out they're normally here. <laughs> I can see the signatures. <laughs> oh, you got that. You're not getting a six out of that one. I was aware of this. <laughs> All I, I was saying is that the assumption is that it's pretty straightforward. They're going to. Just put this solar one? panels there. Chief, I may, I may need protection before the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, through you to the town administrator, will this be another solar project we'd be wanting to get a pilot program with? Uh, I may evolve into that, yes, but we haven't been approached yet. Because if they take it, if they, if he change, doesn't do that, doesn't it change the tax rate with which we will tax that land once well, he takes it out of 61? Once they take it out of 61, then they have to make uh, true on all previous back taxes. Then from there, then depending upon what the use is, then it could be taxed at a different rate going forward. So uh, they will have to pay all the taxes. Okay. Can I just ask from a policy standpoint, uh, as Sarah is correct, is there is an internal review committee that takes a look at these to determine if there's technically any value to the town that we would want to exercise our right to purchase the property. Uh, for those that clearly don't have um, um, any support from that review process, uh, would it be possible uh, just to have the chairman be able to sign off on those as a policy going forward? Oh, you mean instead of this whole board? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Tonight's uh, performance, possibly not. <laughs> what, what we're just trying to do is is things that are that turn out to be more perfunctory that don't have any issues. You know, when I we can just have those signed off, that's great. Um, you know, you might want to check on this, but I'm not sure we can because you know it's a statutory thing where certain boards have to be notified, and the board of selectmen ha it may be that we have to actually vote as a board, but I don't know that for sure. Sounds like something that maybe should be looked at by town council. Well, that's and what I just said. The other thing is these things don't come up that much. In the course of a year, I don't know that we get more than one or two of these. Right. So I don't know okay. that it's that burdensome uh, for us to review it. So. And I like to review it. I think it's for the best to see. All right. There's um, been a motion and a second. <laughs> I was prompting you. Thank you. You're welcome. Not fast enough. <coughs> uh, I didn't say a thing. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, let's see. We now um, we'll do an update school. on the elementary school project. Mr. Ward. Oh, sorry. Looking at that. Um, we had a meeting uh, last week. Uh, we haven't had a meeting with the committee the building committee since the uh, town 
at the ballot question past the school. Uh, so it was, uh, it was an exciting meeting. And uh, of course the architect is on the fast track and the project manager. So they, they uh, started right after we voted at town meeting, uh, at the pallet uh, in early December. And so they are moving forward. They've been meeting with the teachers and the department heads and um, the principal and the, and, and, uh, the superintendent and uh, the project manager. And uh, so at the meeting the other night, the uh, architect came in and the project manager came in and they, they reviewed where they're at and what they're doing. And um, it was, I think it was Mr. Melanowski who at the end of the meeting uh, said to the, to the principal, Ruby, uh, she didn't seem particularly excited up till that point. And he said something, well, Ruby, uh, how do you feel? Uh, uh, what do you think? And she almost bounded out of her chair because uh, it's coming very well. The teachers are so happy with the idea that two years from now or two and a half years from now, they're gonna have a new school with classrooms and, and when they're describing, like the lighting, I'm big on the lighting, right? Okay. Uh, and windows that open. Windows, windows that open, but, window, but the ceilings are sloped from the windows so that it, it helps with additional light and reflective light. And um, so as you go through what they're doing, uh, it, it's really going to be a, a student or a kid friendly environment for young elementary kids. And I'm, I'm sure that Scott being a next superintendent is excited about it also. Um, he didn't get a chance to go up to the Christopher McAuliffe School with us, but many of the teachers and department heads did. And the reason I mention that is because this architect, HMFH, um, they, they do a, a really kid-friendly elementary school. That's what they kind of specialize in. They have good, good colors that are exciting to kids, but not too blast out colors, but um, colorful. The, the media idea of going down the corridor with teaching areas all along it is very exciting for the teachers. And as they look at it, they're starting to get a better idea of what it is gonna be. So it was a very uplifting, I call it, uh, exciting meeting. I don't know if uh, Michael uh, has anything to add to that. Um, the finances uh, he is working on, as you already heard, um, it it's, seems to be moving the way we would like it. Mr. Chairman, through you to Mr. Milanowski, where are we with the uh subcommittee that we authorized you to form? Uh, well, right now we're waiting for us to get to the stage where they would be um, beneficial to come into the project. Um, so when the designs are sent up for 30% review and then we start to get the cost estimates for that, then at that point is when we'll activate that committee to, to get involved. But you've contacted everybody that's going to be on it and they're all willing Correct. to serve? Correct. Okay. Correct. And we'll be... We'll be asking Scott to, to help us on that committee as the new superintendent. Yeah. Looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to the whole project. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. You have to bow from your seat too. Uh, I didn't bow. <laughs> uh, Ruby did get about three feet of air. <laughs> Discussion of the town administrator's evaluation process and timing. Um, I had a conversation I, with uh, Selectman Ward. If you want to, perhaps. I brought that, that up because as I was sitting. Um, I brought in an article here uh, telling about when I retired from the Board of Selectmen the last time, I didn't miss it. <laughs> 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 I'm retiring this year uh, as of election, well, I guess, day. And um, I thought about, you know, we moved everything up. Uh, we, we moved the town meeting up because we, this Board of Five, are the ones that are working through the budget the same with the school committee. If there are, if there are new people on the school committee and the, 
the uh, town meeting is after election, they're, they're not in the know. Um, and so here we are, we are gonna do a, an evaluation of the town administrator and I will be gone and if, if you do it in May or in June to, to do it before the end of the fiscal year. So I was asking or suggesting that we move that up because I have been working very closely with Mr. Melanowski last year as your chairman and for the last year and a half as the chairman of the building committee. And so I felt that you, you bring in a new selectman in, in my place, uh, you're not gonna get any input from me and you're gonna be having a new selectman here who hasn't worked with Mr. Malinowski at all. I, Dick brought this up to me and I, I think the same logic as, as, he, as he noted that applied to our thought process of having town meeting before the town elections so that you don't have, you could have potentially up to two members of the school committee, two members of the board of selectmen replaced at the town election. And then if you're voting on, you know, you, they get thrown into the uh, budgetary process. Uh, well, I think probably all of us went through that uh, because we have only re recently adopted the new schedule. And it's, uh, it's difficult to be able to make a vote and feel that uh, you, you have a, f a full uh, grip on all the issues that uh, were being debated the entire time leading up to the election uh, and to, to, to town meeting. So uh, the same logic applies that uh, you want, to, this way you'd have a board of selectmen uh, and everyone will have, wor have worked with the uh, town administrator at least for a year uh, if they were elected in, in the prior year. So that uh, it, I, you know, it, I think the same logic applies and I guess what we could suggest is that we take the uh, time frames that were adopted, which I think we tied it to the uh, fiscal year, and just uh, uh, tie them to the annual town election so that everything's completed prior to the town election on the same sort of schedule that we utilized, uh, you know, timing-wise for uh, our previous thought. I brought that up because I didn't want to all of a sudden realize in March that uh, the same situation as I just described would come up. I said, you know, I need to give my fellow selectmen um, a heads up on it right now. So uh, rec recognize, though, that that's throwing right into the same time frame that we are uh, hip deep into the budget process. We'd also be involved in the evaluation process. Now, um, uh, Sarah did a lot of work with, uh, and, and I know Helen did, on uh, preparing that process last year. So it should be fundamentally uh, a simpler process this year with the work that they, uh, that they did, and I know Sarah spent a lot of time on it, um, so that uh, I, I personally would like to make the change. Um, I don't know, Dick, if you want to make a motion uh, to that effect? Uh, the motion would be to take the same time sequence that we set in place, and then the final time of that would be April 30th? Well, the, the, t the date of the town election. Uh, the, yeah, what, which is what, the 20... 23rd, whatever last it happens to be in any given year. The last year. Saturday in April. The last Saturday in April, yeah. yeah. Whatever it happens okay. to be in any that's given year. Okay, that's the motion I'll make. Second. Further discussion? Well, I was just looking at, you know, for this year, for example, where we meet the first and third um, Tuesdays of the month, we'd almost have to go ahead and do a special meeting that last week uh, before the election mm -hmm. to get it to, to get it done. So or as long as every, if not sooner, but right. Yeah. So just as long as we all understand, we may have to have a special meeting just to go ahead and discuss and discuss and evaluations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I think it's entirely possible. We might have to schedule an extra meeting to, to okay. accommodate this. I've got no problem with that. All right. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and uh, Michael, you and I can sit down and take a look at everything and see how the dates fit. Second. Okay, <coughs> um, minutes. I move we approve the minutes from the selectman meeting of December 15th. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We have a one day 
Special License Bartending Service of New England, uh, February 6, 2016, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Carver Sportsman's Club. Move we, we grant that license. Is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, before moving on to next meetings, in whatever language that is that's... Yeah, I don't that, understand that. Um, I see that our police <laughs> chief uh, is here with a couple of his officers. Did you uh, have any intention of wanting to address the board? Not tonight, sir. No? We have something in the executive session, but... Oh, okay, fine. Um, I did uh, hear you on the TV that you mentioned the Tuesday the Dirt Raiders. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was very... It was an impre that was impressive. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, if the town administrator would please explain um, the dates, the dates. All right. The next meeting. So I was running out of space to keep the agenda on a one page, and if I used the word change, Perhaps then it would have taken limit two your lives. Town administrator update in the future so that we have more room. <laughs> well, that is that is certainly something that we can do. So I put in the symbol for delta for change. So it's a proposed change two sixteen to two ten. And so those are all proposed. The delta just means change. Now the reason for those dates is to coincide with um, some of our town meeting obligations. Uh, we have the 30 and the 60 days prior to town meeting. And also knowing that some of you have certain conflicts on certain days, um, that's why those dates were proposed. So, so our next you'd meeting be is- So proposing that is a meeting on February 2nd. Yep. Move the February 16th meeting to February 10th. Correct. Then a meeting on March 1st. Yep. And then the meeting on March 15th moved to March 9th. Correct. And then um, uh, the meeting for uh, <coughs> March, uh, for April 5th moved to March 30th. Correct. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Oh, no, clear. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have we'll a meeting you know. on the second. <laughs> On the tenth, yes, sir. On the first of March, yep. 10, 19. Three nine and then three thirty. Two the ninth, March ninth. Oh, yeah. And then uh, March thirtieth. Probably with an understanding, we're probably going to end up with a couple of extras in there anyway. We could, yes, but I'll well, just. Don't forget that we're getting together on Saturday, the twenty seventh. Yes, February. so that's true. Yeah. Second, tenth. First, ninth, thirty. Sure, we okay. can't get him That's to it. run again. What? Oh, I've already got the papers submitted and signatures signed. Um, we're, just, we're just fixing you up, Dick. Not to worry. The election. Your did you Did you read that article today? Who do you think I brought that? To <laughs> yeah, tonight? I saw that. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, do we need to vote those dates, or are you just giving us a heads up? Uh, uh, yeah, just vote them so that everybody okay. knows these are the these are those. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. <laughs> All right, now we need a motion to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining negotiations with unions, clerical, DPW, dispatchers, PDC, IAC, healthcare, police, and for non-union negotiations and with all non-union personnel not under contract and strategy for, oh, we did go back page, litigation for purchase, exchange, sale, lease, or value of real estate that may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town if held in open session and to reconvene in open session. Uh, does someone want to make that motion? I'll make it. Second. Second. This needs a voice vote. Alan Dunham says aye. Sarah Hewan says aye. Mark Clark says aye. Dick Ward says aye. We are now in executive session. We will uh, close out of executive session. We open to uh, public session only to close.